This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast, episode 351. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Ready to get geeky with you, get awesome here. I am not in the studio in Pittsburgh, PA, uh, representing in the flyover state. I'm actually in Peoria, Illinois, uh, actually for uh, Baja SAE. Actually got called out here a day early, so uh, we kind of uh, adjusted things a little bit. And I made sure I have a nice hard line here at the hotel and everything. So uh, we're on Google Hangout. So everything, hopefully everything works out pretty well. Uh, so a little bit of a switch up here uh, for you guys that maybe join us here live here every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, um, which I'm in different time zones, so it's been really screwing with me. Uh, with me from Studio C is uh, just muted himself, John Chichilla. Jordan. Hey, sorry, I was clearing my throat there. Yeah, there's no one in the studio tonight. It's kind of a different night. I think I think Missy's there hanging out by herself, uh, taking show notes and everything like that. Uh, so so there there's there's her and the and, and the pizza dog, and uh, I wonder if she went and got the pizza. Oh, that's that's not cool. If she's eating the pizza player. <laughs> if I would have known she got the pizza, I would have gone to the studio. I, we're still like, like yes, they're expecting us to come get get the sponsor pizza. So so she completely could have just be, she's just going to split it with the dog at this point. So other voice you heard there is Katie Dudas. She is the. Uh, 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 Social media guru over at the Scare House. I always, I always slip on what your t- actual title is, um, but that works uh, for me. <laughs> yeah, it works. It works. It, it pretty much boils it down for you. Social media guru and zombie wrangler over at the Scare House. Actually, really cool things going on over there. Uh, you guys are showing uh, a lot of the teardown uh, from one of your 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 sets and everything. I was looking at uh, some pictures on Facebook today of of, of uh, what, like where the scare, giant crap clown was and everything like that. So. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. crazy. It, it's been awesome because we've been able to show a lot more. I'm so excited. Actually, this this is my home. That is my TV with my VCR DVD combo. Thank you, Sork. <laughs> you can see Boba Fett standing behind it. Yep. Uh, those of you on audio, sorry, you're missing my home. <laughs> but we, I we often we often talk about how Chill is like the gadget guru and he lives in the future, and Katie just willfully lives in the past. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Her house is heated by the fireplace behind her. <laughs> exactly, exactly, <Yes>. right? <laughs> so, anyways, this is your awesome cast uh, we th- where we talk about all kinds of tech and fun and geeky things. Uh, you can check it out here, live.awesomecast.com, although that link's not going to work too well this week. Uh, and usually, we're on the Facebook Live where you can join us in the chat room, which we also don't have this week, and I thought we were going to have with this Google Hangout thing. Um, so, uh, either way, we'll be tweeting. Watch out for like you know different changes and stuff like that uh, uh, as we go through the week here uh, and things change. Hopefully, this settles down after this June, uh, and we get back in studio every week because I think we got to do this at least one more time in a weird time slot. Um, so, and also please check us out and follow everything at awesomecast.com. Subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and look for video versions and sometimes streams on the Facebook and YouTube page for AwesomeCast. And uh, also, thanks to our Patreon supporters. Um, our friends Matt Weller at the Coffee Club level at $5 over at patreon.com slash awesomecast as well as Mike Fedor, fan of the show level at a dollar. Thank you so much guys for supporting the show uh, and uh, and checking us out and, and uh, you know, and really, really getting behind us on this stuff. Also, thanks to our streaming partners, RiversEdgePGH.com as well as the 405media.com. Thanks to those guys for getting us out to other ear holes out there um, across the nation, around the world uh, on their streaming platforms. So let's get into the awesome things of the week. And of course, the, to- the big topic of the week is going to be bacon. <laughs> Everyone loves bacon. Who doesn't love bacon? <laughs> Katie, what's your I, awesome thing? 
So I, I went to lunch today up in Robinson and I ended up at Rocket Fins. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's the candy store next to Burgatory. Oh, all the different fun candy. I mean, it's ridiculous how much different candy they have. They're just, just weird, odd, awesome things. And they have all these ridiculous sodas. And I today was drinking uh, bacon, Lester Fixins bacon soda with chocolate. Oh, jeez. <laughs> So it's, they have all kinds of very, very weird flavored sodas, never things I've never heard before, but obviously I had to try the bacon one mm -hmm. with chocolate and I can report back. It tastes more like chocolate than bacon. Like the initial taste is kind of bacony, but then it goes right into chocolate, like a dilly bar kind of chocolate we determined. You kind of hope it would be, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> they had, it was like the weirdest, I mean, it's amazing. Their selection is unreal and, and you actually get a soda punch card because they have so many different kinds of soda there. Uh, but it was really cool. Like, it's a really cool place to check out if you've never been there. Uh, just like I said, a ton of different kinds of candy uh, and just weird, geeky, fun things. So, yeah, our crowd, totally. I've never heard of this. I, I, but it's, this, yeah. this, is, this is the week for, for, for sweet things because we, um, you know, we, we actually got to, we go to the Sugar Factory in New York for Chachi's Bachelor Party weekend. Oh, yeah. And it was like all these like like sugar infused drinks and and milkshakes. There was a milkshake with a cheeseburger hanging off of it, like a mini slider cheeseburger hanging off of it, um, and 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 stuff with like not dry ice, but whatever bubbly stuff that they 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 use and everything like that. So I have to check this out. I didn't know that there was a place like this over in Robinson. So yeah, it's it's up by Burgatory, so it's kind of off by the where the Walmart is located. That little plaza back there. See, it's not really on, like, the main drag. It's that other little section up there. But, yeah, you have to check it out. There's a Ms. Pac-Man machine in there, free play. <laughs> now, free play. Like, the burger, like, what's the burger shop that's there? It's, it's it's that... Burgatory. Isn't something else there? Firehouse Subs is next door, too. Five Guys? Five Guys. That's it, yeah. Yep. I'll yeah, have that... to check that out next time we're down at Costco. If you want to check them out, they're on Twitter. Um, I was showing shown an image there. It should be coming through on the video at Rock and Fizz Robin on Twitter. Um, and, and I guess there's not a website, so um, check that out. Yes. But um, you know, I I have geez, I ha okay. Let's separate this. <laughs> I'm okay for for chill. And if you have one too, I'm going to do a non Apple awesome thing of the week. Just Is there such a thing? Well, uh, <laughs> the, the the aforementioned um, um, uh, sugar factory we went to, right? Uh, we we got there a little early, and it's over by the Chelsea Market. The, actually, where I went to pick up my Google Glass, oh, so long ago. <laughs> so um, it was kind of cool to revisit that neighborhood and see all the stuff that they've done with it. But we um, stopped by, with, like right next door. We're like, let's go in here, and then you know, it made sense. Samsung's uh, eight eight thirty seven. It's basically kind of an Apple store, but they I don't know how much they sell there. Like obviously they sell things. It's like two three stories. One story goes down, and you go in and they have like a four D theater with you know the Gear VRs and moving chairs going on. Right, you go and there's this prism thing with like five Samsungs set up, and they take pictures. And, and, and it's a kaleidoscope set up. And then there's a giant three-story wall through the entire thing. And your image pops up on there. Um, I'll see if I can find the image. Uh, the image isn't really impressive because it, it was I'm too tall. And I took like a picture of my Transformers t-shirt <laughs> for the most part instead of <laughs> like me. And, and, but, but then like we, we walked upstairs. And it's got Samsung fridges. Um, um, Riz and Chachi were trying to... Uh, order Grubhub on their fridge, um, and and then like it takes a picture inside and everything like that. Uh, it, you know, it, it's just it was a big show off space for Samsung things, uh, which was really cool. And of course, there's like tech, and there was like a coffee shop in there, and and all this kind of stuff. You know, very you know that kind of New Yorky kind of thing, right? Uh, so it was it was really cool. I didn't know. Samsung had stores like this, right? Uh, again, it's the, it's the uh, uh, 837 NYC Washington Street in New York. Uh, you can uh, you can look it up at samsung.com slash US slash 837. Um, and, and it looks like they have like other events and everything in there because there's kind of a presentation space going on. Um, let me see. I got some pictures here. That uh, when I th when I throw up images, is, is that going to all you guys too? Let me let me do that. There we go. 
there you go. So so this is here, here's some images of inside, and there's the big like three story wall, and there's the presentation space, like kind of like you know the the, the tiered you know uh, steps and everything like that. And again, just VR setup so you can check out in this little lounge area. And like I said, it's more it's it seems like it is more show off than buy buy devices kind of thing. Uh, so it was it's a little bit of a different approach than than Apple. It's just like hey, here's all the devices laid out. Uh, I, I personally like the show off space because it kind of gives you the art of the possible versus here's a here's a bunch of our devices laying around a room. Try them out, take them home, and do what you want with them. I feel mm -hmm. like they've taken it to the next level in some of these pictures and kind of showing you not not only can you buy the device, but if you use it in this fashion or in this manner, look at everything you can do with it. <clears throat> like I expect your studio to be like that studio space. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it, it's like it's like you know, it's, it, they're having these launches, like a panel reception about launching a side hustle with the new Galaxy Tab S3. What? <laughs> so, you know, Born This Way Foundation showing uh, from Lady Gaga's Born This Way Foundation uh, having an evening there. Uh, so it, it's really cool, and and, and uh, you know, uh, nice little look at that. Just just the cool surprise in technology, uh, because of course, you know, being in New York, we like we stop at the Nintendo World Store, and there's always like these flagship stores, NHL store, you know, things like that. Uh, and 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 a nice surprise that that Samsung has something cool. Uh, Chachi was going around saying with pulling out his essay and saying, "You're home," you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so that was really cool. And there's an Apple store around the corner. I, I just did not care to go in because Apple stores aren't exciting anymore. So they do they have the, did you know, did the new Pittsburgh store, I would have been interested if you did go in because they were remodeling a lot of the stores recently to completely revamp the look and feel and, and redo a lot of the displays. I don't know, but I did hear that the, um, the one outside FAO sorts, the cube is now in FAO sorts. So I would love to mm -hmm. see what that looks like. And it can't be taking up the entire space because FAO sorts was huge. Yeah, and that's a temporary while they re, while they redo the other one. While they redo okay. Fifth Avenue. Well, either way, uh, so pretty cool. <laughs> pretty pretty cool. All right. So, so so I did come up with an alternative. So we were actually in search of food, and for once we didn't want pizza. Mm -hmm. So we what? went on Grubhub. <clears throat> we went on Grubhub, and it was like pizza shop after pizza shop after pizza shop. I'm like, well, this isn't what I want. Um, it's pretty much everywhere else. I could just typically order from around here. So hopped on Uber Eats and uh, looked around the city. So I was pretty impressed, much, much, pretty much identical to ordering your Uber. Um, you can order food from a number of places. We ordered from the pub and chip shop down on the south side. Um, obviously reusing a lot of the UI elements. I was pretty impressed with the menuing system and ordering. Um, it was extremely e easy to figure out, you know, what was on the menu, what toppings I wanted, um, what kind of extra sauces I, I would like, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then once you ordered it, mm, almost identical to your Uber experience, it pretty much said finding a driver, or actually it said submitting your order, and I got push notifications through the process of my order was submitted, it was in the kitchen being prepped, my driver was in assigned and en route to pick it up, um, the driver was on the way, and uh, just like the Uber interface for for when you're actually in the car or the car's on the way, you can then track the food and route. So, pretty pretty darn impressive. Um, and and got here, the food was still hot. Everything was great, um, and I think it was only five dollars above what it typically would be. So I, it was pretty darn cool. It's not bad. It's the, I, I was been wondering about that. It, it was actually strange when they launched that one weekend because I was out driving. Uh, still, I haven't, I haven't driven for like a month. Uh, I think all of my documents have expired in the app and everything. <laughs> so like, I, got, I got the emails like, where have you been? Um, but uh, they didn't, like it defaulted and I was getting Uber Eats um, stuff and I'm like, I don't even know how to do this. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not doing this, you know, um, after my, my short two two ride stint with postmates uh so that's cool I, I was really impressed with how i put up the website while you're talking here uh how localized even just the website is and it lists like double white grill and and pub chip shop and things like that uh local to very local to to, to pittsburgh on their on their localized site so um cool nice a nice new option hopefully they deliver to me where postmates doesn't 
uh, if I'd like it. So uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. All right. Well, first, I want to give a shout out to our good friends uh, before we get to the main event of our awesome, awesome Apple things of the week. Uh, of course, WWDC was this week and and, and we're, we're a- a- Apple fanboys and girls. Um, they had, uh, so we'll probably get a little bit of a deep dive into it. But first, I want to give a shout out to our friends up in sport Pittsburgh podcasting uh, with a perfect pepperoni pizza. Our friends over at SliceOnBroadway.com I actually ordered some last night with their new online ordering uh, because I wanted to get a little bit of Pittsburgh before I head out to Peoria. I have all the peas today, I know. Uh, so uh, they're over here, over here, yeah, over here, over there, back home <laughs> near the studio in Beachview, right along the tracks over there, as well as in uh, Carnegie, PA, right on Main Street and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. So thank you so much to those guys. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com. All right, let's talk WWDC. I haven't looked at the website, actually, since they they they. they talked about all this to see all that stuff looked um so I, let me let me if i can geek out video a little bit for a moment here um because i geez ar vr and and video editing and we're going to give you some nice shiny high-end stuff if you want to do that with the ipad or i'm sorry the imac geez this is all getting confusing now uh the imac pro later in this year uh so i'm feeling pretty good as a professional in the apple space right now because <laughs> because i mean it, it's like everything i mean katie we've been talking a lot about vr and spherical i guess all three of us have and and the fact that they're going to you know I know I'm glossing a lot of stuff here. Um, they're going to be uh, uh, putting those tools into Final Cut, you know, native. There was a the plugin that I was looking at for about twelve hundred bucks that just went free a couple months ago. I think I know why now because they got Sherlock. <laughs> um, and in the meantime, we have some amazing looking stuff coming. I, you know, we we kind of know what what the next pro thing is. This nice space gray because you know. That's professional and sexy. Uh, so, you know, uh, and again, they, they previewed it, which, you know, you don't get that a lot except for like in this pro thing. Up to 18 cores in an iMac. Uh, they have a whole new cooling system. They're Xeon processors. Uh, it's it's crazy what they're going to be doing with this thing. Um, of course, it's going to start out like, I don't know, what, five grand or something like that. But, you know, if you're you're in that, you know, I don't think this is me as a small video shop is going to be able to, to, to roll with this thing, but this is a real, a realistic professional, um, um, thing. And, and I think, I think for the people still running on, on, on these, you know, uh, Thunderbolt three, you know, they, they talked about how Thunderbolt, the expandability is basically going to be Thunderbolt. We're leaning on that at this point, you know, kind of what we did in the trash can mic, Mac Pro, uh, not the official term trash can mic for Mac Pro, of course. But but in the meantime, I mean, I, I was impressed with these, you know, they talked about the current Macs and, and we saw a little bit of this with the NVIDIA updates a couple of months ago. And, and they were like, well, you can please come there. There was strangely Mac drivers that came out for high end NVIDIA cars. So but we're like you can't put NVIDIA cards in anything because we have iMacs and Mac Pros or MacBook Pros, nothing with a card slot, right? Then they started showing, you know, well, you can get a Thunderbolt 3 enclosure and basically you have a giant box <laughs> next to whatever your Mac is. And it 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 does that, you know, and this is, you know, probably more for, you know, 3D, high-end video, you know, things, you know, I'm not really touching, but still that the possibility exists and that's what's important. And so you can develop those things for VR, for higher end systems, for, you know, and, and have that power, you know, and that expandability happen, you know, uh, it, it's, it's again, kind of the, not the dongle problem, but the bunch of stuff hanging off of my laptop, but still like they're, they're really kind of reasserting as in we are our, a creator platform um and here's a middle finger to the microsoft studio pro <laughs> and, and i really like what they had to say and, and i really liked this span so if you look at the bottom le- level imac um i think it starts at like they cut 200 dollars off the price i think it starts at like 12.99 mm-hmm. and then it goes all the way up to the entry level of that pro and, is five grand and that's a 4k imac the, which the 
the twelve hundred dollar one, yes, is a four K iMac. The the entry level pro is the five K. Um, so I thought that was a pretty cool jump, even starting at that. I mean, you're talking up to what was it, 128 gig of RAM, um, the three terabyte SSD. Obviously, you have multiple external um, USB C Thunderbolt three ports. Um, the the reason that you were talking about earlier that that those plugins went free was because it wasn't because they actually got Sherlocked. It's because or that, that company got Sherlocked because Apple hired that developer. Oh. The, guy that, the, the guy that was creating those plugins. Um, they said, I think they pretty much said, we like what you're doing. Come work for us. <laughs> so, so, so they Sherlocked in the nice way. Yes. It, it's kind of like when um, those Photoshop filters, uh, the, the, the people that did that got bought by Google. So they put them out for free. Mm-hmm. They were just talking about them on like, like, uh, this week in Google last week, I forget what they're called, um, like the something collection. But uh, you know, it, okay, that that's cool. So so basically, like you know, those will start to be built in as um, as 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 tools, in not uh, instead of needing a plug in for it uh, eventually. I'm sure too to to develop that content obviously takes that high powered machine, but I think we've all seen that it doesn't take that type of machine to then run that content. So when you think of your vibes and your, um, your PS, your, your playstations and whatnot with the VR setups, I think you're going to get that downstream content, um, at a pretty, at a, at a decent view and you're not going to need that kind of hardware to run it. It's the development of that content that that's going to take those high end machines. Hmm. I mean, one thing this does is is you know seeing that that twelve ninety nine iMac uh, four K you know I, I've been considering desktop uh, um, you know solutions for kind of expanding out and people you know t- potentially working on things and and I've been looking at like the Mac Mini because I'm like well you gotta if I want something you know half decent I need like a three thousand dollar iMac I don't think I do anymore mm-hmm. uh, and 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 to get a nice screen with that like that uh, it, it makes sense at twelve ninety nine almost at this point. Yeah, the, the one thing that did bum me out was they didn't update the uh, the the Mac Mini. Hopefully, we'll see. I'm wondering, will that fizzle out, or will they somehow refresh that in in an off in an off month after the dust settles from this one? Will we see it in the fall? I don't know. They they really did mention MacBook Air getting an update too, so I, I think that's just they they'll probably do a spec bump or something like that, but mm. it's so low end. It, it, it it still serves a purpose. Um, and again, I mean, Mac Mini still makes sense for like doing a box or something like that. So, um, but no, I think it looks really cool. And of course they, um, I, I think they updated the specs on Mac pros, MacBook pros, I'm sorry, uh, MacBooks for, in general, except for the air currently, uh, and, and kind of readjusted that price. So you can get a 13 inch, uh, MacBook pro again at the 1299 level. So they're, I know it's still twelve ninety nine, but they're they're getting a little cheaper. When you look at like I bought a I bought a four K display, and I bought a to be honest with you a lower end four K display, and it was still I think three fifty on on clearance on sale. So subtract that off of there, and you're looking at a nine hundred dollar desktop. So for, for everything you're getting, I feel like it's not that overpriced. No, no. I just when you you look at these versus the three hundred dollar laptops at Walmart, you know, and that's what people are used to, and that's what a lot of people mm-hmm. buy. That's what we that's what we bought for producer Missy that's out there tweeting for us right now, and and her laptop is already looking long in the tooth, right? And we made sure to get her a little bit more RAM and everything like that, and and but it's it's it is what it is. It was a it was a three hundred dollar laptop, and and it's time to buy another three hundred dollar laptop for as. I was fine putting another six hundred dollars in this 2013 MacBook Pro that we're using here. I'm going to get another. I could get another two years out of this thing. But with the new um, file system too, I'm wondering, like that that 2011 Air that you borrowed, mm-hmm. that's actually eligible for upgrade. And I'm actually expecting a speed performance bump just because of the file system swap. So I'll be I'll be updating that to beta over the the, the probably the next week and see what that looks like. So I'm pretty impressed with, I mean, that's a seven year old laptop and it's still getting free OS updates. So 
and they seem to be adding capability over time. Now there, there's things I miss out on, like it doesn't have Bluetooth 4.0 and I can't do some of the handoff stuff because of that. But to keep those old devices still churning, I mean, it's, uh, I think it says, says something for, from, a, from a device cost and, and strategy, Apple strategy perspective. That big price um, comes with you know, that big price comes with you knowing that it it will last like that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Katie, how long were you running your um, uh, Hello Kitty duct taped uh, laptop, and you were t terribly functional with that thing? Like that was enough for you, right? It was nine or ten years old, I think, because yeah. it was that thick white plastic. Yeah, that was ridiculous. I mean, it ran fine. Like, if I did not need certain things, I would probably keep using it. <laughs> if there yeah. were certain programs like Photoshop and things. Same thing with the thing with me. There's a 2007 iMac that's still that's a 10 year old iMac sitting in the studio, and yeah, it gets a little sluggish because I think I think it probably needs a reformat. It'll probably be a little smoother. Um, but and it's only got three gigs of RAM and, and things like that. But man, it, it, it's solid. You know, there's little problem with it. A little bit, maybe a little bit. Like I think in those little bit in the monitor is 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 a little fading, mm -hmm. and a couple of dead pixels here and there. But 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 absolutely. And and there's like old white IMAX back there that again work fine. They just can't get the new OS because they, they 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 turned it off and and probably for good reason too, right? But they're fine. You know, the, 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 the last the, the last iteration of the white polycarbonate MacBook actually is getting. Hi, Sierra. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. it was like you couldn't get any sort of updates because the OS was like, well, yeah, you're, you're just screwed. Just give up. You're done. <laughs> yeah, right. you should just buy a new there one. Were the, there were these lines. Like if, if your thing could upload update to Snow Leopard, you've been good for a while, right? So like that was that was that last kind of technology line. Everything's just been kind of tinkering under the hood and not really, I want to say not pushing forward, but you don't need the performance at this point to push forward. Um, you just need to, to, you know, refine, I guess. Right. So, um, I was, uh, Katie, did you get, get a look at any of the AR stuff that they were talking about? No, I, there were a couple other things that caught my attention, but not, okay. not as much as the AR. Okay. I want to, we'll touch up, which we'll touch base on, on, on what got your, caught your eye too here. But, mm -hmm. um, I was really impressed because they, they announced AR kit in iOS 11. And I know, I know Chilla, you'll have a lot more to say about iOS 11. And I don't think there's anything you could really get into with AR kit, right? Uh, other than the, the two demos they did, I thought were really well done and really solid. Um, and from a dev perspective, now obviously they had they had the likes of ILM there um, to to help create some of that content, but it was extremely impressive. And I'm guessing they also weren't running that on <clears throat> hardware that's not going to be available, right? I'm sure the iPads were probably the new the new pros that are coming out next Tuesday, um, but that it wasn't like that was a modified iPhone with some core processor that we haven't seen. Um, so to see how that's running on existing hardware, I think again, puts the, the longevity in their device line. And it's, it's the, I'm guessing anything that's gonna run iOS 11 is going to run the majority of that content. Oh, absolutely. I, like, I think maybe your low end, like you know, maybe an iPhone 5 doesn't or something like that. And that's cut. What's that? The iPhone, so the iPhone 5, 5C, an iPad 4 will not get iOS 11. Wow. And, well, and this is going to be a big, big update because there, there's no uh, 60. If your apps aren't 64 bit, like I've been getting the, this app is not going to work if the developer does not update it. Notice. Have you guys seen that? I had to, mm -hmm. I, I've already had to move off of, I was using an app called files that, that allows you to connect back to, um, file shares and whatnot inside of your inside your network um, or other computer hard drives, et cetera, as well as integrating with things like Box and, and Google Drive and whatnot. Um, it also had an internal FTP server that you could actually FTP files into the app um, from computers on your network. <clears throat> I had to find a replacement because that developer hadn't updated the app, I think, in s four years, um, but it was still running. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's not, it wasn't compiled for 64 bit at work. We're going through some, some things of, of, you know, we have apps that are 32 bit internally that need updated and 
to be honest with you, for what it takes for the dev, if the dev was making any money or cared at all, it would probably take less than an hour of his time. And the majority of that hour would be after he compiled the app, submitting the app to the app store and getting approval. It, 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 it doesn't actually take much to, to swap out that library. It, it, it takes do are we still paying attention to this app like i'm, I'm yep. looking like like one's one's uh you know mostly games are what's coming up for me and and sometimes like like restaurant apps right mm-hmm. um like 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 an old x-men and Mega Man x games that i had uh, uh popped it up and and some uh, um um you know uh indie stuff like cannibal uh so so i think i think it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a sad day on on in September, October, when this is released, and, and not a lot of them, but like when when certain games and things like that stop working, so it'd be nice to have that 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 old uh, uh, iPhone five or iPad three uh, laying around, and at least you can like pull up some of the old games that you played. But um, other than that, you know, I I, th- I think it's a cool move forward. They're going all sixty four bit. It'll make things a little more stable, probably. Um, you know, as we. Well, I want to say as we've seen with Windows, but never mind. But but between that and the AR, uh, which looks really solid, and 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 it was also the stuff they were showing. Like we've seen these demos before, right? But not on realistic hardware, Hololens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, stuff that you don't, stuff that you don't have and probably aren't going to get anytime soon. And, and just the little things like like you know, hey, that Pokemon game you're playing, and you turned off AR after like two days because it got annoying, right? Um, you know, actually would be interesting that Pikachu is sitting there on the on the sidewalk or on the table or or something like that, you know, instead of us trying to turn it off and on and, and position it right, um, so we can get really interesting like Pikachu's on your head, you know, kind of stuff. Uh, so, Katie, uh, <laughs> little critters on my head. I'm interested to see what they do from a gaming perspective too, because when you think of like the the puzzle room type games like Mist or something like that, they could turn some of that between AI and AR, they could turn some of those puzzle type games into your room. And you could be looking around and have to place a certain object in a certain manner or... Right, right. That thing like HoloLens was doing, mm-hmm. right? Like we could do a thing where you have a big iPad Pro, you can hold it up and it's your window, right? Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. it, it kind of sucks to kind of hold up an iPad in, in that regard, but but it's for real. And, uh, you know, we've seen some AR stuff on, on our iPhones and our, our iPads. Uh, when I was at the Formula event... Uh, up at uh, Michigan Speedway last month, uh, Bosch had something where they and the, the thing was nobody could figure it out. Like even the like the the, the company guy couldn't figure it out, you know. <laughs> and I, I'm sitting there figuring it out. They had a layout of a city, and you held it over and it overlaid a digital moving city over it. It kind of looks like the be- a little bit like the beginning of um, um, Silicon Valley, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 you tapped on parts and it would show you stuff about their products and everything like that. But you had to hold it in such like the perfect way over the entire field for it to find all those markers. And if you didn't, which most people didn't, it just like what what am I looking at here? And you just moved on to the yeah. next display, right? And well, it just didn't work because there was too much. But if it gets a little smarter, you know, has has that AR kit, you know, can do do a little bit more um, from their show, and it was it was really really interesting. I read that uh, Gatwick Airport in outside of London um, is actually going to build their internal mapping and allow you to say, I want to go here or I need to go here in the airport. And it's going to actually overlay. You're going to use AR to look around, but then it's going to show you the arrows kind of on the ground of where you need to go. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That's like that, that, that. I don't know. That just popped in my head. Uh, one, this is a side awesome thing, I guess. When we were in New York, uh, they put in a lot of the um, platforms. Uh, th- they're basically giant touchscreens, and then there was one actually at the, at the airport here in Peoria. They just, but they didn't have as much stuff. But you can actually put like where you want to go, and it will show you the line and draw out the arrows line to line and walk past and everything like that. Like right there on the on the display. Uh, I thought that was really impressive. Uh, I, I want to get more uh, to iOS 11 with you, Chilla, in a moment. But Katie, what what kind of caught your eye, uh, eye from the Apple event this week? See, I'm going to go to OS uh, 11 too. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I was 11. <laughs> because personally, what I'm having issues with my phone right now, and it's a, um, what is it, a 6? Yeah, it's a 6. I was like, where am I? What phone is this? It's a 6S. And what I'm running into right now constantly is there is something on my phone storage-wise, no matter what I delete, 
no matter how many pictures, videos, whatever I delete off of this, it's there. And I keep getting the storage notification. And then two, the battery drain. There's uh, something on the iOS, uh, I saw the update for the 11, where it will customize things and give you kind of hints and tips between the storage and then uh, the battery is not supposed to be as much of a drain because that's what I'm running into now. Out of nowhere, I'm going from the, that dreaded 10% to dead. Like I started, I was just looking at my battery power now and I was at 100% and I'm at 36% right now on my phone. And wow. usually I can make it through a whole show and then some. So I don't, you know, it's like I'm hoping the upgrade might help, but then I get to clear off all the space of the mystery. <laughs> Did you check to see if you were part of the battery recall? Yes, I wasn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, Poopy. And, 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 you know, we saw a little bit of that, of that too. Um, I, I can't remember if I had a battery repl replace last time I had that issue or I just reformatted my phone. Um, and I, it was either this. I think I might have had it with this. I think Missy was having some trouble with that too. So My 6S, I, had, I was part of the battery recall and I was having the same issue. I'd get to... Well, I'd actually get to like 60% and the phone would shut off. Mm -hmm. But I was part of that early lot of devices that, I mean, I went in to the Apple store. They did a health check. They said, yep, you're part of it. And 30 minutes later, my phone came back out of the back room. Same phone, new battery. Well, I mean, look, look at how much, I mean, how many of us have have um, the battery saver uh, feature from, from, I think it was from the last iOS update. How, how much has that saved mm -hmm. you? <laughs> in the last? Well, how many people turn it on? Cause I never, I, even when I get the warning, I don't turn it on. Well, I do. I mean, I'm, especially when I'm traveling, like it's still in battery saver from, from being on the plane. Cause it knocked down and I just, I just let it go. It was like, especially, you know, being, you know, in the air where you're not attached to anything anyways, why, why, why let all those systems go? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so it, it, it helps me have a longer day, you know, especially if I'm you know, out and about and everything like that, I don't really lose features that are needed. You know, I'm getting everything on my watch for the most part anyways, and my Pokemon and, uh, you know, and, 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 and it works out. Uh, so you no, know, I, I, I live in it a lot when I have these long days and I still have a battery pack on me, but I've been using it less and less, which is amazing since this is, you know, what a probably a year and a half used phone. So the battery's definitely getting lighter. Like it, I was using it heavy in New York and, and by the time we were like at our destination on the train, um, I was already needing to charge up, you know, cause I was Instagramming so much and doing so much with it. Uh, so uh, it, but no, like, like, so, so what I'm saying is like, you know, another year of that, you know, the features that Kay's talking about with the battery saver and everything is, is, um, you know, they're again, it's those, those tweaks, right. And making everything a little bit better. So, um, awesome. Anything else that caught your eye there, Katie? Ooh, uh, oh, <laughs> QR codes. <laughs> well, <laughs> Sorry. That was hilarious. That, that, that was for China. I think they're a big deal in China. Um, uh, but, but are we getting them too? <laughs> I think we are. Yeah, because it's it seems like we're going to be getting uh yeah the QR is it's going to be built into the camera as like we've waited for I don't know how many years to have that ability. <laughs> I'm glad after all these years, their QR codes are finally going to catch on. So, <laughs> what would be funny is if they actually do catch on now, like now that Apple's integrated it into all their cameras, because it's a part of Bixby too, I think, and, and the Android devices. And mm -hmm. remember, it was built into the Google Glass. So remember, they were they were hiding exploits in, in, in the QR codes and early oh, Google Glass. Yeah. Yeah, so right. <laughs> it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. You know, on Tuesday morning, there was a big marketing meeting at like a large number of, market, of companies saying, I told you these QR codes. Yeah. Now, everything that you, let's, we have to reconsider every proposal. We... <laughs> I mean, it, you know, it, it does kind of do that. It was such a, it was such a throwaway thing, and I think you, you heard snickers from the audience from that one a little bit. So, um, but no, it's great. So, um, Chilla, sir, as as usual, you live in the future, which means that you are currently. Are you allowed to talk? You are. Allowed, this is a public beta, right? So, um, it's not public till the end of the month, but based on everything that everyone has posted out there, I'm guessing that. Anything that I'm gonna anything that I'm gonna talk about is actually out there. Oh, look at that. 
it is built it is built right into the camera um <laughs> i just brought up a qr code on a website and it <clears throat> gave me um i put the camera right over top of it on the ipad so i'm actually yes running it on my ipad but r real quick before, do you want me to do my awesome things of the week or do you yeah go, to... go, oh, okay. sorry. go for it oh no no problem um, and, and all, these are all a lot of iOS 11 things, but they're things that were not discussed at W in the keynote. Um, I'm always interested in the day, the, the days after where people pull the the keynote images and you you see the picture with a thousand different phrases behind them, and there's the ones that are white that they talked about, and then there's everything behind it that that they didn't. Um, <clears throat> in talking about that, um, obviously they they. They dropped a hint at the QR code um, for China, but one of the things that's actually built in that you can add into um, Control Center is that there's built-in device screen recording, which I thought was pretty cool. So if you wanted to do a snap or or any kind of social media and show someone what you're doing or show them your screen or build a recording of a game you're playing, et cetera, you can now screen record right on the device, um, which I thought was pretty darn cool. Wait, so those those awesome tip videos, um, which there should be a new one coming out this week. Um, so, so instead of us t having to string it to a computer with an application like Reflector to record it, you're doing it natively. Well, Android does this already, don't they? Well, Android, the app has to do it and the app keeps the recording or you have to use a third party program that sometimes will not work and some depending on the device it may or may not work and then some of them require root access there's there's a number of caveats to the android will do that but yes android does have some capabilities and apple started in into this with replay kit which was a way for games to record kind of like a twitch type stream um, this is actually just the device recording so I haven't I haven't played a lot with it, but I just activated it on my iPad, and I'm looking forward to actually checking it out. Um, but yes, yeah, so to your point, you could do a recording, and we could record right on device, and then I could actually just airdrop it to you right from right from the phone itself. That's awesome. That's going to make those a little easier. <laughs> the, some of the other ones that I saw, the, the NFC reader. So when we talk about near field communication and everyone griped that when they added the NFC chip in for Apple pay, um, it could only be used for Apple pay. It looks like they're going to be opening that up a little more it from the way it talked. It's going to be maybe one way to start. Maybe the device can only read the NFC and it can't pass back content. Um, but that NFC reader will be available to devs um, to what debtors was talking about. Um, you can actually set applications if they're not used to auto delete. Um, the application from my understanding, and I haven't played around with this one either, the application will actually leave its icon behind, but the app itself, all the content will delete, but it will leave the user generated database and, and documents behind. So all of the, all anything that you created after loading the app will still be there but the guts of the application. So if you think of like a, a 1.2 gig game, right? Sitting on your device, if you don't play it for a month or two, um, all your game saves, all that content's going to be there. The icon's still going to be there, but it's actually going to re-download the next time you tap on it. Um, Do they have like partial download start game kind of stuff? I, there's a term for they, it. Like, they they have that for TV OS. I don't know if they have that for... Uh, I'm guessing that'll be baked in. I don't know, but they did start that concept on TV OS um, where it would allow you, it would only download the first like level. And then as you were playing, it would let you then start playing and it would start downloading the later levels as you played um, and then clean up the prior levels that you completed. So uh, I'll be interested to see where they, they take that business chat was a cool one that I thought that's going to be baked into things like maps, but any developer is going to be able to actually add it to their application where you can start an instant chat with a business or software developer. Um, 
So if you're looking at Apple Maps and you have a question about a business that you're going to visit or should you go visit that business, you can actually instantly start a chat with that person or company. Same thing with with applications. So I, I could see this for Uber, right? I'm, my, my Uber driver didn't show up and it automatically then forwards that message within the Uber app to the driver in some kind of Siri text-to-speech type manner. So I thought it was pretty neat. Um, and then another one that I like, actually like about Cortana, as well as Google Assistant, uh, you'll now be able to type to Siri instead of being required to use your voice. Um, any of those Siri questions, commands, et cetera, you can actually type in, um, which I thought was pretty neat. And then from a from something that I kind of rolled my eyes at during the presentation, mm -hmm. but over the last day, I have found useful about 17 times um, quick type where it shows you the symbol above the character and you instead of so like say at signs above the letter a i don't i don't remember where it is on the keyboard but if you kind of take your finger and just drag down on the key um it will actually hit that it'll it'll hit the symbol that's behind that key and they're kind of grayed out at the, at, above the the letters on the keyboard um, so for typing in passwords that have to be alphanumeric and special characters, um, it's definitely useful anytime you're you're typing in a password, which is super nice. I think you tweeted about that or, or put it in Slack during during about passwords, right? I was that what you were talking about? Don't know. So I know the one thing that I thought was weird was now there's a password section in iOS where you can actually see in clear text all of your keychain stored user IDs and passwords and what website they go to, which is kind of nice and kind of scary all at the same time. Now it does require re-authentication. And if you have two-factor authentication, it makes you two-factor auth to the device when you go into that section in, in, in settings. But um, <clears throat> the quick type is, is more of a keyboard thing. And it's kind of how you can not have to switch to the symbols section of the keyboard if you're just typing one or two symbols. It kind of lets you swipe down on the key per se. And let me let me see here real quick. Yeah, especially when you you need characters that are like two layers down, it, it does get really really annoying. Um, well, here's one. So I don't know if you can see this. Uh, probably not. Can you kind of see above the letters on the keyboard? There's symbols, sort of barely. I I, I don't know if I can. I don't know if it's my connection. We'll see it. Yeah. Oh, you look you look okay on the feed actually. But but the but like above the Y on the keyboard, there's the number six. And if I hold my finger on the key and swipe down on the key itself, it instead of putting in the letter Y, it puts in the number six. So. Like I said, it's, it's kind of an easy way if you only have to type in one or two numbers or you're typing in special characters for a password, it definitely is a huge time saver. And that, in a nutshell, is all of the iOS 11 awesome things that I had. I had a couple others, but um, <clears throat> I think those are the kind of the not talked about, kind of discussed in the, the back channels. And I put some links in there, too, that different different. Um, blogs have been talking about features that, that Apple didn't mention, but are, are definitely should be front and center upon release. Absolutely. I mean, the more the more I looked at it, like I, I it, like I felt like I was watching a parody when they announced an app called Files. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and like, like did I, did I switch to Saturday Night Live at this point, right? Um, so, so I, I like that in in, in in drag and drop. It's just like we're excited about drag and drop on the iPad. What what is this? Um, but 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 really, it is it is turning that. You know, I can see that iPad Pro. You know, or just regular iPad. Like that is your computer, right? And more and more, you get that functionality of the computer. And maybe that's one more step towards. Maybe I don't need a computer that can get bugs and have to do updates and everything like that. Uh, so I'm really, really interested to see that, see, see how that goes and how that becomes a little more um, productive. Like, is that a thing where we don't get Missy that next $300 laptop? We just hand her the iPad Pro or, 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 or something like that. You know, it, it's getting real, real close. And, and now I'm on that, well, I just need Photoshop <laughs> kind of spot on there. <laughs> the thing that I thought was impressive about, about files was not just about, you know, being able to drag and drop a file. <clears throat> it's that, and, and obviously I don't have, they don't have the app inventory yet with integration points, but 
to have your Google Drive, your Dropbox, everything in one kind of finder, it to me is really, really nice to be able to integrate all those things together and then spin through and find all the content you're looking for. I mean, right now, all I have access to is things that are in the local local documents within the apps and, and my iCloud drive. But when you expand that out to OneDrive and, and Dropbox and Google Drive, that's where I think the real power is going to come into that that file browser. Yeah. It's looking like 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 Katie. I, I you know I know I know you do a little bit of podcast editing and everything, but a lot of what you do, I think, it, it could get done on an iPad, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's you know, it, it's I mean, we're we're talking like an iPad Pro is a thousand dollars. Come on, but it's it's not like it's cheaper, but still. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> so, a bit, a couple hundred. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. I mean, we're still. We, we, this isn't something that we're gonna be like pick up on a whim like a Kindle Fire, but. Well, I- I'm wondering too, are they going to go the route that they did with the phone where you go in, you pay um, a monthly fee and you're entitled to an upgrade or the buyout price for the, at least for the cellular ones. Um, when you think about that model, um, it would get more current iPads out on the street. It gets you in at a lower buy-in price because it's a monthly cost. Um, that device then has cellular Obviously, we talked about last week where you could kind of take your phone number anywhere on any device. That kind of now allows you to take a take and make a phone call if you want a ten and a half inch phone. Um, but it kind of gives you that best of both worlds, and I'm I'll be interested to see what Apple does um, when it comes to uh, allowing for some kind of new every two or upgrade every year, and and kind of pay a subsidy on on the device monthly. And now you can pay for it with iMessage. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, that was, that was interesting. You had the iMessage um, 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 Apple Pay, which is like sending money on PayPal. I think it was a discussion I saw online. So the, the thing that I found interesting about that is notice they totally glossed over the Apple Cash card. And I'm guessing it's not to not upset the banks. <laughs> so at least when not you yet. get money from someone... It doesn't go in your iTunes account, and it doesn't go onto the card. It comes off of the card on the other person's device and onto your Apple Cash card. I like. And it. then it's up to you what you then do with that money. You can then deposit it in your bank. You can then do whatever you want with it. But it's on the Apple Cash card, which I'm guessing is going to be a virtual card. I'm guessing they're not going to be issuing plastic. Right. Oh, absolutely. I mean, well, well, you know, it seems it seems like a back step that I have a card for PayPal, mm-hmm. you know, um, but but I mean, there's so many terms. Dollar General, you can use their PayPal account like without a card, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. That's popped up a lot of places, but it's so inconsistent. You can't really live on it. Um, we have to we have to speak of the one thing uh, before we get out of here today. Um, there's the HomePod. Again, I kind of felt like I was in a parody. And also, I started, I really started fading at that point. We we're like two and a half hours in at this point. And I'm just like, eh, it's just. I, 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 Katie, did this get any interest out of you? I mean, HomeKit has got to be, you know, interesting as part of this. He's, he's, he's kind of like eh, over there on the videos. I'll let Katie go first. I just want to lean over and be like, you can see my TV with a VCR in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, Katie, Katie, like, asked questions. I did questions. a street transaction with an Echo. <laughs> yes. Kate, Kate, yeah, that's right. You did a street trans- transaction with your Echo Dodge. Like, this is no place in my home. And she just talks <laughs> to her TV and VCR, but that doesn't really, you know, I mean, she thinks it responds. But, um, but I mean, it's nothing, like, I mean, compared to, like, an Echo or anything, it doesn't look like something you think is going to have a better fit for you in your Apple ecosystem home than, than, than that did. I don't, I don't know. Because the problem is, is, like, I don't, I, I should feel like I should be more connected, but I think one of the things is I rent my home, which mm. I, I think if maybe if I owned it, things might be different. You know what I mean? Cause then I could have more integrations like within you know my home universe. But right now I, I don't need anything. <laughs> I feel is like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> well, it's funny. Cause I, I actually had to, I, I put in the outlets and new switches in the old apartment. And then when we moved out, 
I took them all. I kept all the old ones that were in there and took them all out. Put the took the new ones out. Put the old ones in. So I did. I did go through that. It does take some time. So I wouldn't recommend it for yeah. for the the typical renter. But it, it's possible. Oh, yeah. So the whole pod is basically. I mean, they're, they're really kind of promoting it as a speaker. And, and that's where I think that the interesting notice. The first thing they compared it to was Sonos, which yeah. is great audio quality. Don't get me wrong. <clears throat> I'm not a huge audiophile. Um, I don't know about, about you guys. Um, I'm happy with hooking up a, a $100 Bluetooth speaker to my $40 um, Alexa device. So I'm interested in it. The other thing that I thought was pretty cool was obviously there's the whole recycling, refab fabrication, pulling apart old devices. You notice that device is running off of an A8 chip. So I'm guessing some of those recycled devices have been taken back apart and they're throwing A8 chips off of old devices into that, which I think is nice. I just don't see the need. And the interesting thing, look in that room, there's no TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, because <laughs> everybody's got their iPads to look at. I they, guess. Listen, listen. Don't you have a music room in your house where you just listen to music and have sparse furniture uh, in a sink? Apparently, <laughs> um, you know. I mean, it, that's just the the way it is. You know, um, my Airbnb didn't have a TV, uh, as Riz noticed. It's like, where's the TV? I'm like, well, so it's, it's you know, this is how people roll these days. Um, but I mean, it, it's it's. It's interesting. I, I and again, that A9 chip, it's a little more powerful. It's probably way more powerful than it probably needs. But but you know, some of the stuff that was shown in these visuals was the fact that it pays attention to the shape of your room. <laughs> so that it, it, it can yeah, you know, can bounce the signal off and figure out where it's placed. And uh, I'm interested too in the the top panel. So obviously you get this the Siri. Siri lets you know that she's listening and whatnot, that animation that comes up. Um I'm interested in what's the quality and capability of that panel because will they start to display, can they display real content? If you ask what the temperature is, is Siri, is Siri going to come back and say, and read you the temperature as well as display it there? And is Apple's commitment to, to accessibility, I'm guessing they're going to use that for more, which I think... Could also be a differentiator on the product. I'm just, I'm not that interested in the speaker quality versus the capability. And I'm getting, I can talk to my phone to get a lot of that content and I can play music on my stereo. Um, maybe as I build out different areas in the house or systems and equipment just go bad over time. Maybe I would think about it, but three, 350 for one and you know, they pair up together. You can put more than one in a room. It, it's getting, it, it's a, it's a pricey speaker in my mind. You put this in there with a the Google home and your Amazon dot that you got in a street deal off of Katie. And then and, make them fight. Oh, geez. Ooh. Make them fight yeah. for dominance of your home. I think that's, that's where we're going. Obviously. Well, I'm, I'm wondering if the home pod, like their target is Bose. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm wondering if it's those all in one, because those cost around thousand dollars. So you're getting a pretty high quality. Like if this is going to be your like home theater setup because you watch everything digitally, you don't necessarily have a television, but maybe, you know, maybe you don't have cable, you know, like the whole shebang. But I'm wondering if that's kind of there. The, the entire family crowds around a, a 10.5 inch uh, iPad. <laughs> it's just like the good old days. <laughs> My dad would always tell me about how we listened to the shadow and everybody crowded around the radio, right? Because that's what they had in the house and, and listen to the shadow and only the shadow knows. And we're just going to, you know, surround. No, we won't have to surround the home pod because it'll just bounce everywhere intelligently in the room. So mm -hmm. we can still be independent in our corners. I'll be interested to see, cause that's a, that's a December release. I think that's an end of year. I'll be interested to see if they somehow, make some play to integrate this <clears throat> as wireless speakers that then work with Apple TV. Mm -hmm. I, I think Ooh. that could be an interesting concept. Ooh. And the other thing that I don't, that, that definitely didn't, that I didn't see get up played at WWDC and I may have missed it cause I got called into a meeting partway through airplay two 
AirPlay version 2, which will be built into iOS 11, now supports multi-endpoint multi devices. So you can actually say, go into Apple Music and play this song in this room and this song on that speaker and that song on that speaker. And you can actually, and but I want this song playing in my living room and my kitchen. So you can actually take and stream multiple different songs to multiple different endpoints, which I thought was interesting. So it'll be interesting to see how, and, and obviously with the Apple TV, you can tell it to use an AirPlay device as your speakers. So it'll be interesting to see how they upplay that. Be interesting to see. Um, and also keep in mind, this doesn't uh, ha uh, come out till December and they didn't talk much about the Siri aspect. So I would have speculation that maybe there would be some Siri announcements around the iPhone release that would maybe play into this. And I'm hoping they more. really cover multiple users. Yes. They so, were, well, have they on, on devices? <laughs> so, yeah. um, but the, I don't think that's in their wheelhouse right now. No, you have to buy an iPad Pro for everybody in your home. Well, but you, you're not going to buy a different speaker for every. This is this is a Sorg speaker, <laughs> and this is Missy's speaker. Exactly. You're going to have to have two in each room. This is Wicket speaker. Exactly. Go exactly. Google's supposed to be integrating that switch to recognize voice in the home. But I'm still not a fan of how Amazon does it, where you actually have to walk <clears throat> Alexa through a switch. So mm -hmm. you actually have to, Alexa, you have to tell her to switch accounts. So like if you're saying take a note or put this on my shopping list, you have to tell her to switch accounts. And Google supposedly figured that out, but I don't have a home to play with, so... Be interesting to see how that works. We were talking about Missy getting a, an I, uh, iPad. She says, watch it, Sorg. I still need my keyboard and number pad. You, you can get a number pad on an iPad? There's got to be a keyboard. No, not even, on the, even on the 12-inch, there's no number pad. You can That's get a Bluetooth it. number pad she can carry around with her. There, there you go. So you can get a Bluetooth something or other. It's not going to be like form fit, you know, like or anything like that, but still. Logitech announced a new case. I don't know if theirs has a number pad or not. That 10.5, that you, you put a number pad off to the side, it's going to be kind of small. That's true. That's true. But, man, I mean, maybe you do most of your work there, and you have the old the old laptop, you just boot up for Photoshop. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. You know, there's some workflow there. Um, but anyways, all right. I, I think I think we did good. You know, apologize for, uh, apologies to, to uh, people that maybe had some... Uh, uh, stories for the week and everything like that. I, I had I had Missy put them in just in case, but I, I kind of knew how the show was going to go. Um, so shout outs to you know Brandon I, I always submitting a lot like Amazon Amazon and uh, GameStop teaming up for a joint trade in program. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, Toyota is working on a flying car. Is Toyota? Oh, Toyota is going to be at my next event. I, okay, Toyota is going to be at, 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 in uh, Nebraska when I go. Uh, so I'm going to ask them about the flying car. Uh, I think they are. At least they were at the last one. Um, and oh, Toyota is the one that I, I was in that i the i car thing, um, the the little three wheeled deal that I squeezed my ass into. Uh, but mm -hmm. a lot of cool stuff this week. And uh, Katie, uh, VR porn is getting super realistic. <laughs> yes. Oh, you got it. Oh, we, this is fun. Now, I, I like this article, and it's a fun article to read. It's a Mashable article, and it's one of it was interesting because what it. It's nothing earth shattering, nothing we haven't talked about before, but uh, this gentleman was at um, CES and he was with Naughty America, which is one we really don't talk about. We haven't even talked about Naughty America, <laughs> um, but I guess that's a different company. And I thought it was interesting because the way he talked about it is he kind of walked through how he felt and how he felt like the, he had the conversation that it wasn't um, a 360 degree experience like he was used to in VR because you only want to look forward when you're watching porn. And it's the 180. And then he talked about that when he looked down, he had a, a very muscular body and how disconnected he felt in the beginning. But as it went on, it became so realistic that when the woman in the video leaned forward to kiss him, he pulled back. <laughs> and how he felt like this body belonged to him. It's just really interesting. So there hasn't been a lot of articles like written from somebody who wasn't directly involved with the industry about how it makes them feel in these videos and how realistic this is that it's tricking your mind into like I I'm this buff dude and this lady's kissing me. So I think it's 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 really neat. Like I just thought it was a, it was a super cool article. Like it was porn. almost he's like I'm going back to to 2D porn because it's that realistic. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the one I read. 
Um, but it was in a it was in a different format that didn't have obscene ads like this one is. Like I can't even get to the content without waiting for thirty seconds at this point, um, and it looks weird when I when I have my ad blocker on. So, um, but no, yeah, it, it, and it was talking about like like that kind of feeling and everything when you're when you're a part of it. So uh, it was really interesting. If you want to check that out, um, and that's over at Mashable, and of course I believe that uh, is this LinkedIn. Do we? The, well, if not yet, we'll we'll share it over in the Awesome Cast group. Uh, as well, so uh, you can you guys can check it out yourselves. So uh, thanks for keeping the porn in the show, Katie. Yeah, of course, <laughs> anything for you guys. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, uh, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, Chilla, he's at ChillaTech.net, talking That's gadgety weird. things. Talking gadgety things. Come over, talk to me, Chilla, on the Twitter. John Chill on the Facebook. Yeah, of course, and I had Kay Dutters on the Twitter. Fantastic episode last week um, um, with uh, uh, kind of dealing. It was like three of the top haunt <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, uh, owners in America, and and the very interesting things, including a naked haunted house. And then I loved. And I was I was texting you when I was I was listening to this thing on the way back from New York. Um, where, you know, what, what do they do when the kids don't want to go in and the parents are making them and some really interesting stories around that. Highly, highly recommend it. Check out the Scarehouse podcast and check out, uh, you do Scarehouse live on Facebook and that is Thursdays? Fridays at noon. Damn it. <laughs> <It's Friday. laughs> Somebody else did that to you last week, I think. Um, but Fridays at noon. Yeah, I was like, it's Friday. Fridays at noon, yeah, so you so can it. drop in there and um, and you have a lot of people from... Scarehouse, uh, different aspects of it, and it, it looks like you guys are having a lot of fun over there. Oh yeah, it's it's a great time, and I, and I like the ability to interact with people right then and there live, so it's fun. I enjoy it. Awesome, and of course at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Um, follow my Instagram as uh, as usual as usual as I'm on a trip like this. I will be Instagram storying uh, most of the day. You can uh, hop on there if you're checking this out on Tuesday. I also uh, download those videos usually and put them on my uh, my Twitter and my Facebook uh, tagging uh, Instagram stories. If you want to see that, actually, if you look through those, you can see how Chachi takes Manhattan, the bachelor party of my best friend Chachi, happened uh, this past weekend in New York City. Uh, where we ran into the Sugar Factory and the Samsung. Uh, store. Uh, so drop into that, see what's going on. And uh, until next time, and thank you, producer Missy, I'm back at home eating our pizza from Slice on Broadway, probably, <laughs> and uh, keeping the tweets and everything all night. And thank you, everybody, for dropping in. Looks like a lot of you guys dropped into our YouTube feed tonight. Uh, so sorry there wasn't a chat room. I'm not sure why that was because we usually have a chat room when we do this. We do we do this all the time on, on Wrestling Mayhem show uh, for some of the shows, and we, we have a chat room every time. I just had one last night, so I'm not sure. Um, Maybe it's because we don't usually do this account, perhaps. But um, but uh, yeah. So let's know what you thought of that, and uh, if, if it's is, are we better quality when we just do it this way or not? So I'm glad this uh, connection with this hotel uh, uh, held up. Check out everythingawesomecast.com. Please subscribe to everything. Follow us on Patreon.com/slash/awesomecast. Uh, thank you to our awesome watchers. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.